No, you were fine last time. I hit too. Yeah, right. I see. Yeah. All right, there we go. We're live. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Film Inspiration, inspiration for everyone through the lens of a filmmaker. My name is writer director Ed Rivera. We have with us Sal Balmigo and Fausto Morenteria. Now, this is kind of a follow up episode because last time I had you guys on was back in late June, I want to say, after yeah, you guys like did like the main production of um, of the uh, of the crowdfund. No, I'm sorry, of the shoot of the trailer mm -hmm. for Sacred Goals. And so uh, let's jump right into it, you guys. Let's let's talk about, uh, so, so big uh, treat for everyone out there. This is part of the treat, these two guys. But also, what do we have, Sal, to show people? We have the trailer for That's Sacred right. Goals. All right, so, so Sal, talk to us very, very, very briefly. What is Sacred Goals? And um, and then, you know, the, the making the trailer went up. And then we'll go right to the trailer. Okay. Um, Sacred Goals is a docudrama feature film that we're making. Uh, it's based on true events that happened here in Tucson. Uh, it follows the fight to defend ethnic studies in Tucson high schools, and it follows a high school soccer player as he becomes more and more awakened to the struggle that's happening around him. And he gets as he gets more and more involved, he starts to find himself being pulled in different directions and his priorities change, and it's a conflict of what's important in life. And that's the main focus of the film. We produced a concept trailer for it, and from here we plan to produce a full-length feature film. And you, so you guys are, again, using the money from the concept trailer uh, on an Indiegogo page that's right. to raise the funds for the full-length feature, right? Exactly. Yes. We have a crowdfunding campaign that's live right now. And from that money, we're going to produce the feature film. Yeah. Cool. Well, what do you guys say we go straight to the trailer? Yeah, and we can uh, talk to it. Talk to it. Yeah, we're going to talk to the trailer. Talk about it. <laughs> all right, you guys. I don't know if you, who's more nervous, you guys or me. But, all right. You know it's a lack of water because I'm going to get like that. Okay, here we go. Enjoy. When was the last time you saw so many kids excited about learning? Our ethnic studies program has engaged our students in ways I have never seen before. Our students' grades, test scores, and graduation rates are all up. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer has signed a new law banning ethnic studies in Arizona public schools. These classes have enriched my life in so many ways. It's amazing to learn about our history and to see ourselves reflected in the curriculum. I just wanted to play soccer and win a state championship. I never asked to join any movement. But then, I met her. And everything changed. Yasmin and her friends opened up my eyes to everything that's happening out there. They taught me not to back down and to stand up when the politicians wanted to ban our classes. So what was I supposed to do? What would you do? You know, there's a lot of hate out there. And everybody wants to blame in Mexicans for everything. The best thing for us to do is just Keep our heads down and keep working hard. That's it. But you have to let your voice be heard. That's true. But you have to be careful. I know you and your friends want to get out there and stand up for your beliefs. But unlike them, you have a chance to earn a scholarship, to play soccer for college. Don't be throwing your future away by protesting out there in the streets. You'd be the first one in our family to go to college. Remember that. Do empowered and educated children pose a threat to the status quo simply because of the color of the skin? You want to hand me the book? No! no. You heard her. Get away from her. No, no, Isaac, Isaac. Get out, son. Unless you want to follow me to the office. Isaac. This law specifically targeted 
the Mexican American Studies program, not any other ethnic studies program. Why is that? And if we find out you had anything to do with helping them with this, we'll get rid of you so fast your head'll spin. You can't intimidate me. I'm not scared of you. Regardless, we should be celebrating these kids, not demonizing them. We're done here. So now, my team captain is suspended from the state finals. That's all for you guys. Mira la situación que te encuentras ahora. Suspendido por una semana. Yo pensé que te importaba el fútbol. Y ahora te vas a perder el juego más importante de la temporada. Vas a defraudar a tus compañeros de equipo. It's not worth it to me anymore. I care about you, Diego. But if this is your attitude, then we're better off apart. Ever since I got caught up with all you, you've done nothing but ruin my life. Pero hasta ahora ustedes no han hecho nada sobre la situación. Pensaban que solo se iba a resolver el asunto. You have a unique opportunity to make a powerful statement today. I can truly say these classes saved my life. Do the right thing. I remember what Yasmin told me once. She said, they think they can bury us, but they don't know that we're seeds. All right, what's up? That was the trailer for Sacred Goals, the upcoming feature. Now again, you guys are using the trailer to raise funds to make the feature, correct? That's right. That's okay, so talk, right talk to us a little bit about what the trailer, um, like the attention it's been able to garner, the, the, <laughs> the momentum it's been able to garner up until this point. We've gotten a lot of good reviews on it so far. I mean, people have really, really responded well. Um, you know, we did put in a lot of time to try to put out the best product that we could and to tell the story in, in the best way that we could and to do it justice. So. I think I'm really glad that it seemed to have paid off and it shows that it, people are really liking the trailer. So we've got a lot of great comments on it, which makes us feel good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we put our heart and soul in it. And then like Sal says, you know, to make it look really nice, uh, we, we went, even if we went over budget, it didn't matter. We wanted to get something really good out there for you guys to see and entice you to chip in a little bit. Yeah, it's our hope that from that trailer you can see the vision that we have for this film and that you can see what the final film would look like. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to ask you. So how different is it, you guys, because I, I mean, I think it's a great idea to give people a visual or at least a visual reference of some sort, in this case, a full trailer, to help people understand what that vision is. Because here's, here's the thing that I've seen happen. If I tell people, well, here's what my idea is, you know, the idea or the concept that you might have in your head or your head can be two different things. But when you lay out, I mean, and, and this is from uh, from my experience, when you lay out some uh, a visual concept, that's the point of reference. And boom, there it is. So there's kind of no mistake about it. Like people get what you're trying to communicate, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Because we live in a, in a visual world right now. Everybody wants to see oh, yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, it was, it's no longer word of mouth anymore like it used to be with our parents' generation. But so this is a great opportunity to show you guys what it's all about and the story itself, how important it is to tell that story. It's a very, very important story. You guys, so let's go to a few hellos. Carla, hello. Heather, how are you? AJ, thank you for always tuning in. I was doing a little technical test last night. AJ was on and he checked out the moment in 2015. Yeah. So AJ was on there. Uh, Jaime Contreras, thank you very much. Raul Aguirre, how are you doing, senor? Good hey, to see you on Raul. here, senor. Uh, Angie Ornelas, happy birthday to you, Angie. Said happy birthday. She's out in the LA area. And oh, right hey. I said happy, happy birthday. birthday. So happy birthday uh, from Tucson, Arizona. Now, you guys, what were some of the biggest challenges coming up with the trailer? And and then, um, you know, what are... What are uh, what are the hopes or maybe the specific things that you want to see happen? I mean, other than generally raising money with the trailer. And then we'll go back to the trailer. Um, I think that some of the challenges were is we had some pretty big scenes, you know, like we shot at Kino Sports Complex at the soccer field. So we shot there at the stadium. Uh, we did our, our protest scenes at Pima College. And those were pretty, pretty big scenes, you know, for being on relatively low budget. Those were... Those were big scenes that we wanted to still 
make them appear bigger than they were or to, to use what budget we had to make a, a really good looking scene. And it you know took a lot of work on our part, but we really we took it seriously and we wanted to to make something of the highest quality. And so we we sort of used that to as as a bar that we, we set a high bar for ourselves. And those are some of the challenges that we had. I would think so some of the some of the bigger challenges. And and it, it it was also because we had to get around a lot of paperwork, and we got to talk to this yeah. guy, we got to talk to that guy. We yeah. need uh, insurance, uh, so it was a lot of running around until we finally. It was it was like coming down to crunch time. I mean, like the week off, mm -hmm. and we still didn't have the okay to film in those locations. And everything else was already set. And then Which we uh, finally got the okay. Yeah, but we finally like, got it like three days before, I something think, like that. something like that. Wow. And we we're like, yes, we got it. Let's move forward. And, uh, yeah. I'm willing to bet maybe somebody forgot about the paperwork. And so they're like, oh, the date's coming up. And so you know, one that's, of the other that's things, my two cents of it. You know, I just want to say that, happy one, that it happened, though. So. Thank you. One of the other things is that Fausto is a big believer in rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and getting the scenes down pat. And, you know, Fausto, his, his vision for that paid off because we rehearsed those scenes for a month straight and the actors and actresses came in and we, we worked on those scenes and worked on those scenes till they had them down and it really it paid off and it showed because when it was time to shoot they knew what they were there to do we didn't have to we didn't have to craft the scene right then and there because they already knew what they needed to do and man that that really paid off from from Fausto. Well, they, they, I mean, it's all, you know, credit to the actors who were able to... Uh, they were incredible. Yeah. The they, actors I mean, and actresses are amazing. They, they, they took direction. They, they took uh, input and, and uh, tweaked their performances to where we, how we wanted them to look. And they delivered on mm -hmm. set, which was, you know, great on their part. And these are all local actors and actresses. Every one of the, the actors and actresses in this film is from Tucson, except for one, Natasha Hale, who's from Flagstaff. But these are all local people. That's got to feel good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, this is a a, a local uh, story. Yeah. And 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 like we mentioned before, we don't want to film it in LA. We don't want to film it in New Mexico. We want to film it in Tucson. Mm -hmm. So we need everybody's help to get that done. Very cool. Uh, we got Carla right here. Um, hi guys. Looks like looks like a pretty awesome short film. Carla, no, it's not a short film. It's a trailer for an upcoming feature film. Um, but she says, congrats. Great team. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, great team indeed. Jaime Cordova. What's up, brother? Hey, sound hey, man. Hey. Sound man, Jaime. Uh, Silvia Sanchez. Hey. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Nicole, Nicole Camaño, how you doing? Um, so let's go back to the Sacred Goals trailer. Uh, for those of you who are just jumping aboard, and it's about four minutes, so please do enjoy it, and we'll come back to us. But also remember, we want to hear from you. Questions, comments, especially questions, anything you guys want to say. It's not about uh, just us trying to blab on and on. We don't have that much ice water on us right now. So, you know, you guys ask questions or, um, you know, any comment you want to say also. We appreciate it. So without further ado, here's the trailer. When was the last time you saw so many kids excited about learning? Our ethnic studies program has engaged our students in ways I have never seen before. Our students' grades, test scores, and graduation rates are all up. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer has signed a new law banning ethnic studies in Arizona public schools. These classes have enriched my life in so many ways. It's amazing to learn about our history and to see ourselves reflected in the curriculum. I just wanted to play soccer and win a state championship. I never asked to join any movement. But then, I met her. And everything changed. Yasmin and her friends opened up my eyes to everything that's happening out there. They taught me not to back down and to stand up when the politicians wanted to ban our classes. So what was I supposed to do? What would you do? 
You know, there's a lot of hate out there. And everybody wants to blame the Mexicans for everything. The best thing for us to do is just keep our heads down, keep working hard, that's it. But you have to let your voice be heard. That's true, but you have to be careful. I know you and your friends want to get out there and stand up for your beliefs, but I like them. You have a chance to earn a scholarship, to play soccer for college. Don't be throwing your future away by protesting out there in the streets. You'd be the first one in our family to go to college. Remember that. Do empowered and educated children pose a threat to the status quo simply because of the color of the skin? You will hand me the book now! No. You heard her. Get away from her. No, no, Isaac, Isaac. Get out, son. Unless you want to follow me to the office. This law is specifically targeted the Mexican-American Studies Program, not any other ethnic studies program. Why is that? If we find out you had anything to do with helping them with this, we'll get rid of you so fast your head will spin. You can't intimidate me. I'm not scared of you. Regardless, we should be celebrating these kids, not demonizing them. We're done here. So now, my team captain is suspended from the state finals. That's all for you guys? Mira la situación que te encuentras ahora. ¡Suspendido por una semana! Yo pensé que te importaba el fútbol. Y ahora te vas a perder el juego más importante de la temporada. Vas a defraudar a tus compañeros de equipo. It's not worth it to me anymore. I don't care about you, Diego. But if this is your attitude, then we're better off apart. Ever since I got caught up with all you, you've done nothing but ruin my life. Pero hasta ahora ustedes no han hecho nada sobre la situación. Pensaban que solo se iba a resolver el asunto. You have a unique opportunity to make a powerful statement today. I can truly say these classes saved my life. Do the right thing. I remember what Yasmin told me once. She said, they think they can bury us, but they don't know that we're seeds. That was the trailer for Sacred Goals. Um, so you guys put the trailer together and you guys had to shoot back in late June. Mm -hmm. So, but during the, uh, when, when we had the uh, release party or the debut party for the trailer, uh, yeah. if we could call it that, um, at your place out, it was like three weeks, a month ago, about that. Mm -hmm. um, I asked her a question in particular. So go ahead and take us into that topic and into that area. Basically, the bottom line is that we're, we want to make this film one way or the other. That means either we make it with like you know, a so-called Hollywood type film with these, you know, big name actors and, and like a huge production, or we make a local independent film, basically like what you just saw. So, I mean, one way or the other, we're going to make this feature film. What's it take to, to have that gut and that grit to say, you know what, one way or another, but it, it's almost as if, and from what I've always picked up on you guys regarding that, this topic in particular, or this aspect of a film production and this film production is it's almost a need. You need to make this from what I've picked up from you guys. Fausto? Uh, oh, I totally agree. Uh, nobody else is going to come talk, uh, talk to, about our stories or, or, or make them into films. We mm -hmm. have to do it ourselves. And so that's why we need to, to, uh, to make it. And, and uh, touching back on, on the, uh, we had a little cast and crew viewing mm -hmm. for the first time of this uh, Sacred Goals. And, and uh, there was a, a member of, of the uh, Mecha students there. Uh, and she was, she had tears in her eyes because she, mm -hmm. and, and one thing that struck me and, and it stayed with me was that she said, we fought and we did all that. And, and we thought nobody cared, but seeing you guys caring it's just very special to my heart. So I mean, it, it's it's just a true story. It is heart heartbreaking. I mean, it just it has to be told. And another of the young women who was really involved in that fight, she told me very something similar that watching that trailer brought tears to her eyes. And to see our community stories, the the blood, sweat, and tears that so many people put in for so many years, to see it put up like that, it it, it emotionally affected her. 
And that's that's why we feel that this story is worth telling. You know, I said in the last podcast that, you know, we do have stories that are that are valuable and that we often hear stories that come out of California and Texas. And those are good stories too, but we we want to tell our story from Tucson. And we think that they're just as good. And we think that this one in particular can be inspiring to a lot of people. And and going off of uh Going off of what you were telling me about this lady, this young lady that you said she get tears in her eyes when she saw the final product in the trailer. I mm-hmm. think that's just going back to absolute basics, whether we're talking about, um, you know, a, a short film, a feature film. When you see any sort of concept summarized a, a, into a narrative form and then boom, it's there and it's not a big complex issue. It's a thing that you sit down and you watch and boom, there it is. That's, um, you know, just going back to uh, yeah, the basics of filmmaking, I think that's part of the magic is when you see it all, so many moving pieces of a topic, whatever it may be, come together into a story. And hopefully, you know, there have been stories out there that haven't done them well. There have been a lot that have been done well. Um, so, like, one of like, very quick reference, Spotlight. You guys see that? Oh, yeah, great film. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, I didn't know too much about the Boston Globe. And obviously, you know, we heard we heard about the Catholic Church, but um, so when you see it summarized, I mean, that's that's got, so when you see this summarized, it's got to be powerful for somebody, for a lot of people, I'm sure. Well, so pe- people from Tucson have have told us how emotionally affected they are by by what we're doing, and and how incredible it is to to see, you know, on the big screen. And I, these are people from Tucson, but I feel I think Fausto would agree that this story has the potential to affect people all over and anywhere that the story has a universal right quality to it that to see these students that that fought for for so many years and against such powerful people that it it will resonate with with people anywhere it has a universal appeal i think oh yeah definitely cool um let's see we got mr jaime cordova uh you're doing good uh he's elated uh, you guys are pushing your dream forward. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Jaime. Thank you, Hi, man. Thank you for your work, man. Yeah. Angie Ornelas, knowledge is truth. We need more films like this. Yes. Boom. That's true. Because, I mean... So Honestly, I'm, that's part of what they were trying to ban, is, is these types of stories. So many of the books that were banned, uh, they probably wouldn't like to see movies that show our, our community in a positive light, to show us you know, being educated and doing positive things as opposed to being drug dealers and gangsters and whatever the heck you, you would normally see. So, so let's go let's go into that topic for just a hair. What would be the threat of seeing U.S. Latinos as positive and productive um, participants of society as there are many of us? What, what is so threatening about that, or so wrong about that? I don't know you have to ask Tom Warren or Hoopenthal or any of these, these people. But it, when you have an empowered, educated community that can think critically, that can that can question things, and that can see, look at history uh, through a critical light, um, there's people who do see that as a threat. And they will fight tooth and nail to, to stop that, even going so far as to outlaw classes and, and ban books. That, that must be a threat, right? If they if they went so far as to do that, then it's obviously a threat to someone. Very true. I, I got asked one time, um, you know, why I don't, like, because I know a lot of what's made usually a lot of times, and I applaud you guys on, on this point. Watch, you you guys all understand what I'm about to say. I got asked, well, why, you know, why don't I do the post-apocalyptic thing, the zombie thing, the, and when I say thing, genres, um, the narco genre, um, the undocumented genre, but more of like the previous ones, uh, Westerns, especially Westerns here in Tucson. Uh, My response was that before I want to see a U.S. Latino actor as a zombie, I first would like to see him as just a regular everyday human being that maybe goes to work and um, has uh, successes, highs, lows, ups, and downs. And you guys are doing that too. And I'm really happy, I'm really happy to see that, you know, that there is that type of you guys are telling those types of human stories. And it's just, just human, thing, human right? stories. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I, that's what it goes back to for me. Because we do get up to go to work, we go to school, we pay our taxes. I mean, we don't break laws. You know, we're not rapists. We're not out there raping anybody. I mean, and bottom line is, these kids they wanted to learn. Like that was what their entire fight was about. Their 
the entire fight was to learn, was to read, to learn about history, to learn about culture, literature. That's it. That's what this entire fight revolves around. And that's a positive thing. Cool. You guys want to go back to the trailer? Sure. Okay. Sure. And uh, Fanny, Fanny, thank you very much for jumping aboard. Uh, check out this trailer, and we will roll it right now. And also for everyone else who just jumped aboard, maybe jumped aboard midway in the trailer, here you go. Enjoy. When was the last time you saw so many kids excited about learning? Our ethnic studies program has engaged our students in ways I have never seen before. Our students' grades, test scores, and graduation rates are all up. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer has signed a new law banning ethnic studies in Arizona public schools. These classes have enriched my life in so many ways. It's amazing to learn about our history and to see ourselves reflected in the curriculum. I just wanted to play soccer and win a state championship. I never asked to join any movement. But then, I met her. And everything changed. Yasmin and her friends opened up my eyes to everything that's happening out there. They taught me not to back down and to stand up when the politicians wanted to ban our classes. So what was I supposed to do? What would you do? You know, there's a lot of hate out there. And everybody wants to blame in Mexicans for everything. The best thing for us to do is just Keep our heads down and keep working hard. That's it. But you have to let your voice be heard. That's true. But you have to be careful. I know you and your friends want to get out there and stand up for your beliefs. But unlike them, you have a chance to earn a scholarship, to play soccer for college. Don't be throwing your future away by protesting out there in the streets. You'd be the first one in our family to go to college. Remember that. Do empowered and educated children pose a threat to the status quo simply because of the color of the skin? You want to hand me the book? No! You heard her. Get away from her. No, no, Isaac, Isaac. Get out, son. Unless you want to follow me to the office. This law specifically targeted the Mexican-American Studies Program, not any other ethnic studies program. Why is that? And if we find out you had anything to do with helping them with this, we'll get rid of you so fast your head will spin. You can't intimidate me. I'm not scared of you. Regardless, we should be celebrating these kids, not demonizing them. We're done here. So now, my team captain is suspended from the state finals. That's all for you guys? Mira la situación que te encuentras ahora. Suspendido por una semana! Yo pensé que te importaba el fútbol. Y ahora te vas a perder el juego más importante de la temporada! Vas a defraudar. It's not worth it to me anymore. I don't care about you, Diego. But if this is your attitude, then we're better off apart. Ever since I got caught up with all you, you've done nothing but ruin my life. Pero hasta ahora ustedes no han hecho nada sobre la situación. Pensaban que solo se iba a resolver el asunto. You have a unique opportunity to make a powerful statement today. I can truly say these classes saved my life. Do the right thing. I remember what Yasmin told me once. She said, they think they can bury us, but they don't know that we're seeds. What's up everyone? We're back. That was the trailer for Sacred Goals. Um, again, you guys are doing what with the trailer? What's the final goal? To raise money to make the feature film. And so we have an Indiegogo campaign that's live right now. It, it's linked at the bottom. Yeah. Anything, if you can donate anything, it will help towards making this film a reality. Yeah. And if you don't have five bucks to donate, it's okay. Go to our friend, uh, friend page, uh, hit like, share it, share it to all your contacts in, on Facebook and 
and put we'll it out there. The say, hey, out, yeah. check this out. And everyone, right now, that that uh, Indiegogo page where you can see the trailer and also give five, ten bucks, whatever it can be, on your behalf, is already in the body of the description of this video, and it'll it'll be there with the uh, uh, the fan page also after we're done here in just a few moments. But you guys, if you can give it five, ten bucks, whatever it may be, it adds up. And if you say it's the way I look at it, it's five bucks. It's five bucks that weren't there before. So everything helps. No, uh, no donations too small or too big. Yeah, right. And there's yeah. some perks there for you guys too. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're not only supporting local film, but you're also supporting our stories, which is the most important thing. Let's get this story out there. Um, Alex Martinez, hey, what's up, David, Eugene Valdez. What's going on, brother? Thank you for tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. It was good seeing you the other night. Uh, Alex Martinez, that was an amazing trailer. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Alex. I agree. Thank I agree, you. Alex. Thank you. Arturo Rubio, como estas, Arturo? I used to work with Arturo at Telemundo. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, okay, you guys. So, again, once again, if you could give any anything um, that you could give, would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, again, the link... For the Indiegogo campaign where you can watch the trailer again, which you just saw, or also uh, donate, is already in the body of the description. It will continue to be there along with the fan page. Guys, any uh, any closing thoughts, any closing uh, words to share uh, before we go back to the trailer? And and then uh, eventually cut out. No, I, I want, just want to say one thing that the... And so in, in, in real life, the, the fight, the student-led fight to defend ethnic studies has been going on for over 10 years now. Um, so students have been fighting for over 10 years to, to keep their classes, to keep their education. And just um, a matter of weeks ago, a federal court decided that this law that banned ethnic studies, HB 2281, was in fact motivated by racism and discrimination, okay? So ba that is to say was that these students, these young men and women were right all along. They had the side of justice on their side. They knew they were right. They were fighting against the governor, the attorney general, the state superintendent, school superintendent, school board, elected officials, powerful people. But they knew that they were right. They knew they had justice on their side. And they were vindicated. The students were vindicated just a couple weeks ago that these classes or banning the classes was in fact inspired was motivated by discrimination against our community yeah this story is very relative it's happening now still happening now so we got we have to make it and we have to make it soon and it's a positive thing it's just it's showing the courage and the spirit of these students these like i said these young men and women that stood up and fought back to learn for their education that's what the story is all about it's a very positive thing that again shows what our community is capable of in a positive light. Yeah. And that's and that fight, you know, granted that they win it and, and they install all this ethnic studies back into our classes, it's gonna our generate our kids generations are gonna they're gonna they're gonna reap the all the uh, profits of all this because yeah. it's for them, mm -hmm. it's for the future generations that are coming. So they can know the history of our of our ancestors and the history of our people and the only way to put it out there is just keep fighting. And the other thing, too, is that this student-led fight did have repercussions nationwide. They inspired people in California, in Texas, in New York. So during this time, I guess maybe a year or two ago, the state of California, the state, passed a law that now mandates ethnic studies. Yeah, okay. So to graduate that. high school in California, you have to take one ethnic studies class. They That was a direct... I guess, response or inspiration from what happened here. They saw what happened here, and they said, no way that's going to happen in our state. So they turned around and, and did the opposite. They said, we're promoting education, we're promoting ethnic studies. And they directly said that they were inspired by the students here in Tucson who were fighting, who were on the ground, making sacrifices, blood, sweat, and tears. So that all that's to say is that our local community is, is being recognized nationwide for the spirit we have, the heart, the courage. And that's a good thing. That's a cool thing. And and with regards to the fight for ethnic studies, one of the ways that I've really liked, and, and, and I heard this, these are not my words, it was told to me that um, in many ways, because of the responses and the, uh, the, the good reactions that it had in other states, that um, 
it basically puts what's going on here in Tucson and Arizona as a whole on the forefront, on the mm -hmm. forefront uh, of of the you know other people have used other terms like the laboratory state and whatnot, but the forefront, and so that's a word that stuck with me, and so um, I just kind of wanted to put that out there when somebody shared that with me, and I said yeah. Yeah, and so that should make us all proud to be Tucsonans, that our, our our community is inspiring people nationwide. That's such a cool thing. Yeah, and, and, and the people out there need to know that. They need to know that. And when I read the script, and, and I'll say this really briefly, when I read the script for the first time, uh, I saw the potential in the script. And I honestly honestly think that this could be the next standard delivery movie, that it's going to be shown forever and ever and ever. You know, high school classes, junior high classes, even college classes. So, I think so. Be proud, stand behind it, and be, and that way when you're out there you, and you see it on the theater, you can say, I put my little uh, uh, sprinkle of salt in that. Yeah. So, jump aboard. It's going to be a great ride. And just to close out on my end, you guys, this being film inspiration, uh, film and inspiration. Film's our thing. Film's the thing that we're definitely doing here. Whatever your thing is, run out and do it. Don't wait. Don't. Um, you guys are definitely not waiting or not asking for anybody's permission or blessing. Uh, just you guys, just run out and do it. Whatever your and thing you, is. You, you make your films. You don't ask for permission either. Exactly. We we don't need with, with the tools and resources that we have nowadays. We don't need the institutional validation or blessing anymore. If you want to do, if you want to, with regards to filmmaking, if you want to run out there and tell a story, tell a story, tell it well. If you tell a bad story, don't tell them Edward Barrow was associated. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, just run out there, and do whatever you do, and do it well, run out there, but just make sure to do it. Uh, time goes by too fast, and um, you know it breaks my heart when I hear you know people later in life say, "Well, I've always wanted to," and no, just do it now. Just do it now. Do it now. You guys, thank you very much. This has been Film Inspiration. This has been Sal Balanego and Fausto Nurrenderia. And I'm Edgar Ibarra. We're going to leave you guys with the trailer to Sacred Goals again, the fundraising trailer uh, to make the feature. The link is in the body of the description right now and will continue to be along with the fan page link. I'll put that in just afterwards, but anything that you can give will be greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot, Great everyone. Share it. Thank yeah. you, everyone. Click and, on it and, and take a look at the perks. And uh, we'll see you later, you guys. Thank you very much. Have an awesome night. When was the last time you saw so many kids excited about learning? Our ethnic studies program has engaged our students in ways I have never seen before. Our students' grades, test scores, and graduation rates are all up. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer has signed a new law banning ethnic studies in Arizona public schools. These classes have enriched my life in so many ways. It's amazing to learn about our history and to see ourselves reflected in the curriculum. I just wanted to play soccer and win a state championship. I never asked to join any movement. But then, I met her. And everything changed. Yasmin and her friends opened up my eyes to everything that's happening out there. They taught me not to back down and to stand up when the politicians wanted to ban our classes. So what was I supposed to do? What would you do? You know, there's a lot of hate out there. And everybody wants to blame the Mexicans for everything. The best thing for us to do is just keep our heads down and keep working hard. That's it. But you have to let your voice be heard. That's true. But you have to be careful. I know you and your friends want to get out there and stand up for your beliefs. But I like them. You have a chance to earn a scholarship, to play soccer for college. Don't be throwing your future away by protesting out there in the streets. You'd be the first one in our family to go to college. Remember that. 
through empowered and educated children pose a threat to the status quo simply because of the color of the skin? You will hand me the book now! No. You heard her. Get away from her. No, no, Isaac, Isaac. Get out, son. Unless you want to follow me to the office. This law specifically targeted the Mexican American Studies Program, not any other ethnic studies program. Why is that? If we find out you had anything to do with helping them with this, we'll get rid of you so fast your head'll spin. You can't intimidate me. I'm not scared of you. Regardless, we should be celebrating these kids, not demonizing them. We're done here. So now, my team captain is suspended from the state finals. That's all for you guys? Mira la situación que te encuentras ahora, suspendido por una semana. Yo pensé que te importaba el fútbol. Y ahora te vas a perder el juego más importante de la temporada. Vas a defraudar a tus compañeros de equipo. It's not worth it to me anymore. I care about you, Diego. But if this is your attitude, then we're better off apart. Ever since I got caught up with all you, you've done nothing but ruin my life. Pero hasta ahora ustedes no han hecho nada sobre la situación. You have a unique opportunity to make a powerful statement today. I can truly say these classes saved my life. Do the right thing. I remember what Yasmin told me once. She said, they think they can bury us, but they don't know that we're seeds.